stocks are valued at the highest levels they have ever been in history, depending on the data that you use. And in today's video, we are going to look at what's going on at a deep level. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. You could see the PE ratios, you could look at price to book, price to sales, and confuse yourself with all of the jargon that the financial industry loves to use. We're going to look at some basic examples right here today that just make it plain and simple. Underlying all of this is money printing. If you are willing to devalue a currency, you're going to see things priced more and more and more of that funny money. And that is really what we're seeing overall. You print cash, you devalue currency. There are some people who say that these actions actually don't impact each other. And I want to know what they're on because I want some of it. Look at it here, Magnificent 7, it's more like the Blazing 2 and the Tepid 5. Nvidia and Meta have pulled away from the rest of the once hot group as investors focus on AI. I think it's really important that yes, of course, AI is the flavor of the day, but it is very important to see how we just move through these different trends. First, it was, as they say here, it was the FANG, then it was FANG with two A's, and time went on, and it was this one, then it was that. Look, you had Facebook, Meta, that they were talking about the metaverse, metaverse, metaverse all the time, and what happened to their stock? It went down and down and down and down. And then they stopped talking about it and they started firing people. And what happened to the stock? It went up and up and up and up. It's all based around the psychology of money. Interesting book, by the way. And if you look at it in the way that the speculation happens, these things are always moving in and people believe that they have all the answers until things change. The speculation is like the froth on top of your beer. Perhaps in my case, it would be the crema on top of the espresso, the little layer there, right? But sometimes that froth, it's more than the actual contents of what you want to get. That's when you know you have a problem. Hard to really see when you're actually in the middle of it, but let's go in a little further, all right? Here we have it. Bill Gross laments excessive exuberance as stocks surge. What I love about Bill Gross is that he would say anything. He does not care. If you think that this guy cares, just look at some of the things he has done before. All right. And he's saying, look, bonds aren't attractive either because there's too much supply. And that is actually a topic for a different day. And I would love to get into depth on the Finance Friday class about that specifically because it leads into something I've talked about a lot, which is a fundamental problem, massive problem actually for, for the United States and the way that we see things as they are. Uh, basically just saying, it tells me that fiscal deficit spending and AI enthousia, uh, enthusiasm have been overriding factors and momentum and irrational exuberance have been dominating the market since 2022. Buckle up for excessive exuberance okay so i think he makes a very good point here and clearly we can see this that over time there's always this as i say the flavor of the day or whatever that creates uh, always always there's going to be winners right like do we think that nvidia is going to be worth nothing tomorrow no i'm not saying that but certainly when we think that no it can never stop then things, of course, do. Just like what the problems of Tesla stock today, is that because of Elon Musk and his, you know, purchasing of X? Or was it that the, you know, path from 2019 into all the way into 2021 was simply a lot of speculation, a lot of crema? That's for you to decide. Put that in the comments below. In the example of Tesla, is it the problem that he's got issues today with one man? Is it because they're not producing enough vehicles? The Model Y, I believe, was the most purchased vehicle in the world, uh, at least fairly recently. Or was it the fact that from 2019 into 2021, that should never have happened? You tell me. Put it in the comments below. Let's have that discussion. Goldman Sachs says mega cap. Bull case might take the S&P 500 to 6,000. Look, if you keep printing, 6,000 is nothing. Let's talk about S&P 500 to 10,000. Why not? Why is your your you know your goal if you're setting a goal there? Why is it so low? I mean that's crazy. Set it higher. Why not? Print into confetti. Why why not? 
stocks look like, look like they're in the most extreme bubble in history, according to investor John Hussman. He predicted uh, 2008 and 2000. Okay, so we give him credit there. But we've seen many of these things before where we get into a state of overvaluation. And then what happens? I think there are a lot of different metrics today that seem very similar. Okay, we are watching the price of a lot of these stocks just go straight up into the sky, and that is never a good sign. It's never a good sign to see that, even if you are heavily invested. You don't want to see it go straight up because people start to sell off. You want to see a nice, steady gain, but people don't like that, especially with people that have a, a little bit of money. Um, you know, I, I had people bragging uh in, in the comment section before about how much they're making and please don't brag with with that amount of money you got to realize that the amount of money that you think is a lot maybe it's a lot to you but in the grand scheme of things you're not having any impact at all it, it's a drop in the bucket okay and so when we look at the big money that's where we need to put our focus because that's what's driving the speculation in which brought your stock, your investment, your portfolio to the level that it is. When we break this down further, you have to understand how much money is being put in to the, you know, the financial system as a whole. We can use that term liquidity and liquidity is measured by different things. Okay. We can look at the currency in circulation at this time. We can see the reserve balances at the federal reserve. We could look at, you know, the amount of uh, quantitative easing or quantitative tightening that's happening with the Federal Reserve. And we track all of this stuff and we get an overall picture. That overall picture determines whether the stock market will go up or whether the stock market will go down. You might think to yourself, well, you know, these period of time, this is, you know, AI, it, it, it's about semiconductors, it's about computer chips. It has actually very little to do with that. And then on top of it is that layer of speculation it's not necessarily like speculation as gambling i'm not saying that i'm not saying it's all fraud gambling and then people are going to sell you must understand that there's that speculation of people they've bought in but they've got their finger ready and waiting to sell i'm going to wait until somebody else comes in and then i'm going to sell it off that's the issue and it's not the small time retail trader it's these companies that are trying to make x number of dollars or x percentage that they are going to sell a portion not necessarily all of their shares but they're going to do that when they feel the time is right okay so here it is looking at this i mean we can see this in different ways but um essentially looking at the total market cap of the u.s stock market and that is the green line comparing that with the reserve balances with the Federal Reserve Banks, and it's an important metric to compare. And whenever these two, this, by the way, this is part of the money mirror method. Um, I, I've talked about this before, money mirror method, the money GPS. Search for the money GPS, money mirror method. Talked about it countless times. It is available in the um, playlists on my YouTube channel. But basically, when these two things go away from each other, you might not think it's possible, but they find a way back together and keep a close eye on that. While we have seen the federal funds rate, like the main interest rate of the Fed of the United States, the actual, like that, that would seem as if conditions are getting tighter, more uh, tight in general. The conditions have broadly loosened. In fact, financial conditions index shows us that we are looser broadly. This is a broad term, looser than where we were when they started to increase interest rates. Isn't that so weird? But that's the way it works. And we got to understand where the wealth is today. Who benefits from all this? This is the action that they've been taking for many, many years. And here you can see, is it a surprise <laughs> that over the many, many years, those at the very top have benefited the most. And since 2020, they've benefited even more. And when you start breaking that down, of course, the red line there, that's 
the 0.1%. And if you go even further, 0.01 and 0.0001 and all that, you see it uh, you know, to a, a different degree. But looking at it, I mean, it's clear. The people at the very top are doing more better than ever before, okay? Now, let's look at this, the good and the bad. I want to give you both sides of the equation. I want to show you something. This is interesting, okay? Because you are seeing $8.5 billion preliminary agreement with Intel under the Chips and Science Act. So essentially, they're getting cash to build in the United States because of everything that's been going on with the semiconductors. This is beneficial. You can compare the the stocks looking at amd which has done quite well in the last couple of years but come on just looking at this uh nvidia is just overwhelmingly i mean just going crazy but what i think is important right here and now is to look at intel they have performed poorly and since this chart was created actually basically you know other countries are starting to say with China, of course, uh, we don't want any NVIDIA. Uh, we don't, excuse me, we don't want any um, AMD and we don't want Intel and their stocks get crushed as a result. So you've got to watch that. Okay. But the whole point here is that some, there are some winners and there are some losers. We have Amazon and Google quietly tamp down generative AI expectations. Guys, don't, don't, you might have heard us say some things that made the stock go up by 300%. We want to just tamp down those expectations. And then we have, of course, Apple's night, nightmare year getting worse. Okay. All I'm trying to say here is that we have so much speculation. We have so much stuff that's been going on all around the news that keep pushing the stock higher. Articles are being written about it. We are looking at all this. Look, Bitcoin did the best, in my opinion, when it came down to 16000 okay? And then it went up to that thirty dollars or $40,000 range, more than doubling where no articles were written about it there was no talk about it it was forgotten it just started trickling up and up and up and up and now it's a different story because now there's that hype now there's the euphoria going on i liked it a lot better when it was at that sixteen thousand leading up to the thirty thousand when everybody hated it that's what you got to do but it's hard to be a contrary in this time finance friday if you want to join it we got a small group of very good people and i hope that you will be one of those people there's a link down in the description to learn about that two hours every single friday and i hope that you'll join on there hit that thumbs up button to support this channel that's all i'm asking hit the thumbs up button i really do appreciate that and of course i'll see you tomorrow take care